we've got to look to counterattack if they kick us the ball because in some ways, Mills has the Wallabies with their two great successes, and they've been very good. Have they shown us a formula on how to put pressure on the Springbok team? Oh, absolutely they have. But but I also think the style of play that the Wallabies and the New Zealand team are playing is is just a, a lot better than perhaps what the what the Pumas and also the South Africans are playing. So if you look at those two styles, you know we're, we're very similar in terms of our approach with the Wallabies, the Pumas. Um, you know, like, like South Africa. So where they come, you know, where's their ability to be able to, to try and change now? Now, if you, if you if you give us the ball or give the Wallabies the ball, they'll punish you. And that's what's happened, uh, um, you know, in this last weekend. You know, they kicked too much. The Springboks tried to play a little bit earlier on, but I don't think they had, they had the confidence to be able to sort of sustain that ability. And then they just got caught up in two minds when they went, reverted back to their own game. They started miss, missing, you know, lineouts from key players. Uh, you know, they try to slow the game right down. So, different, different sort of ways to play. And, and I think for the Wallabies, they've, they've definitely shown us, um, you know, some aspects we can really attack the, um, you know, the South Africans. I think the big one is fitness. Also, fitness has been huge, and the ability to keep the ball in play, keep the ball in hand, and really trying to p- apply the pressure and, and hoping they make mistakes. And that's definitely what's what's happening for Argentina but also the, the, the world champions. Ruby, are you surprised? And JK, the same for you. I, I want answers from both of you on this. Are, are we surprised at how South Africa has really struggled to impose their will on this Wallaby team? Or is this more about Dave Rennie and his charges, Ruby? Or is it more about the fact the Springboks are not the same team they were two years ago? Oh, it was frustrating. I remember last week, we, um, I think it was JK brought it up, the word adaption, and that, that was key for me. And I think when South Africa first come out in that first 10, you know, they, they try to play it a bit more expansive and kind of earn that right that we talk about here in New Zealand, and it was awesome. I was all ready for it. And then that was it. Um, I think it was that um, a big moment was, you know, um, Itzabeth, when he, he did that, he's one of the most experienced players in the game, and really early on he crawled, he did double movement never happens at test, test match. You would never expect it from a player of his calibre. And then they, what Mills said, they went back to what they were doing, which did not work against the Wallabies. And if there was one team out of the four or even out of the other three, apart from the All Blacks, that could flip it around in one week, for me, it was going to be the Springboks. And it was just frustrating that it wasn't. And another big key, you know, South Africa are such a huge powerhouse, right? You look at that, that eight, the front, the first eight, and you just go, wow, that's some power. And the, the way that the first half ended was Australia counter-rucking over top of the South African forward pack. And that was huge for me. Um, so I'm actually very worried for South Africa. The only way they can beat the All Blacks now to me is if they completely flip the script, which I thought they were going to do against the Wallabies, and they just, they just didn't do it. Um, one thing that savers it, though, is Freedom Cup, 100 years, huge moment. If South Africa lose everything except against us, that'll just be bitter. Like, that'll just, that'll be a win in itself. So I'm really hoping um, that South Africa will be able to flip the script on the All Blacks. And I know you didn't ask, um, Jeff, but I think Australia, the halfback was really key here. Nick White had a much better start, I thought, um, than Tate McDermott and almost got in the head of the clerk. So that halfback there, we've been talking about fullback in 10, but halfback is going to be, is going to be massive for me. Oh, I've got a statement okay. for all our South. Af- I've got a statement for all our South African friends, and I know you guys know I love you. Um, but are they now just a Northern Hemisphere style team? You know, all their players are playing over there. Um, the thing that frightened me the most when they started spinning it wide, they were so lateral; they were really easy to defend against. Um, so, uh, Ruby, I, I don't think you can flip the coin that quickly start getting you to a game um, that stops a lot of their players playing in the Northern Hemisphere. They just played against the Lions and it was a battle. You know, they won the World Cup against England. They came out and they surprised them a wee bit by actually playing a bit wider. But it looks like they just weren't used to it, um, you know, against Australia. And I, and I think the calmness of Quade Cooper not to panic early um, you know what South Africa are going to throw at you now, right? You just know. And that's why I was really interested about your comment, Goldie, about um, Damien playing at fullback. You know, you've got a, a, you know, you've got a 20-foot fullback who's playing at the moment uh, under the high ball. I think he might just tactically be a better option. 
plus he can kick it from 55 yards, you know, and I saw, I'm sure McKenzie can, but I just think they're, they're a Northern Hemisphere team. Um, a lot of their, you know, they're in the Pro 12. A lot of the people that are coming through are coming through the Pro 12 now. They haven't played Super Rugby for a couple of years, which gives them that balance. So, you know, it's just actually like playing a Northern Hemisphere. And that's not a criticism. I think Northern Hemisphere rugby is outstanding. It's just different. And at Townsville, it's going to be hard and fast and at play just play into our hands. But this is an historic occasion. The 100th Test match between the All Blacks and Springboks to have been played originally in Dunedin, not to be due to circumstances we are all aware of, but it's time to get a different perspective. And Springbok John Smith played 111 tests for the Springboks. Played the All Blacks an impressive 21 times or caught up with him as we edge closer to this milestone occasion. John, I've got to ask you, when it comes to test match rugby, for South Africa, are the All Blacks your measuring stick? Is that when you find out exactly where you are? Without a doubt, Jeff. I think it was it was it was, it was always two different debuts for for you as a Springbok, and uh, it's your first test, which you obviously you never forget, and it's sort of a blur. And you know you, you know what it's like. You just you get through it, and it's it just you never really registered because of all the nerves. And then the first time you ever play the All Blacks and face the hockey, so you know you you get the same story from every Springbok. And it's 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 funny you, you mention that because, you know, obviously we've had the displeasure, or shall I say the the, the difficult task of, of being pundits in the last two weeks against Australia. And I was sitting with Jean de Villiers and I was just saying, you know, I, I, I can't really judge um, this team too badly because my record against Australia was, wasn't, wasn't too grand. In fact, I don't think I ever won in Brisbane. Plus, I led a team that lost 49-0. And... Um, Sort of trying to figure it out, and and again, it's, it's just one of those things. But it's as a captain, the easiest game of the year uh, to be a captain to uh, to make sure that guys are in the zone and focused and on the money um, was an All Black test, and and it doesn't matter who else you play, it always gets harder. Any other test is is, is a much harder task for a captain to sort of like get the team right on the money, on that sort of edge where you sort of just, in, you've got just enough composure to be able to understand what to do to win and, and just enough sort of wild side and nerves to to um, give the occasion the respect it deserves. So yeah, it is a special thing for us. Is that just, is that history and legacy? Is that growing up the stories of historic games between the All Blacks and the Springboks? Jeff, I think it's it's probably something that's built over time, um, and it has it becomes almost a sort of a urban legend, and it is a sort of a myth, a mythical feeling about an All Black Springback Test, and, and and there have been some good ones, and there's been some bad ones, and and it, and it's really been, I think the the gravitas of a of a box, an a, 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 a sort of a Springback versus All Black Test has always sort of been in the hands of, of the Springboks. I mean, we have been far more volatile in our ability to uh, stay on top of, of, of our game year after year after year, where the All Blacks are just always sort of a benchmark, always always right up there. And, um, and I think it's got a lot to do with the fact that everyone else also, probably if they chose two teams that they disliked to play against the most, it would probably be the All Blacks and the Springboks. All Blacks, because of their sheer skill set and their ability to be athletic and physical and smart all at the same time, and and I guess the Springboks because there's just a there's a there's a, a little bit of an edge to to any half decent Springbok team.